Hey guys, so around New Year, there is always this predictable heap of content online and conversations in real life about New Year and how New Year is the new you and what can we change about ourselves to make ourselves better, to improve, to succeed more, when in reality, I mean, it really is just one day to the next, right? Like if we think about it in very practical terms, there's not much of a difference between the you on the 31st of December and the you on the 1st of January. But it creates this pressure, um, so much pressure on people to re-examine, reflect. And, you know, personally, I, I do take this time of year to reflect and to just pause and to maybe set an intention for the year or not even... Sometimes I just pick a word and that word will just sort of resonate with me for whatever reason and some years that word sees me right through and some some years that word sees me through to March and I forget about it. Um, there's nothing wrong with reflecting of course but personally I've never gelled with the idea of setting resolutions and only doing it in the new year. Um, I prefer to when I feel the call to reflect and to set new intentions and habits that I just do it throughout the year. Um, but what I notice is that when New Year comes, because of this pressure of everyone doing it all at once and it, it being this big thing, um, there, there's a lot of chat about the, oh, I failed, um, oh, I'm lazy, like, why can't I achieve these goals that I've set myself? And I, I just want to put it out there because that is and definitely was me. Um, I've always been very hard on myself for not being able to attain the goals that I set for myself. And I just, I guess, wanted to put it out there. Like, what if it's actually not that you're lazy and it's not that you're a failure? It, in part, has to do with how distracted we are. And because when we want to add new habits into our life like say one of my the classic new year's resolution is that I want to get back to the gym right so say I say okay this year I want to get back to the gym and go five times a week to do that it's not just a case of saying it like you have to build the habit and what gets in the way of building habits distractions and for me, at least, those distractions come mostly in the form of technology. So things like my laptop, most of all, my smartphone, which is just constantly on me and constantly buzzing. And so I've been thinking as I've been doing a digital sort of reevaluation of my life, like a, um, a digital detox over the last month or so. Like, what if we didn't look at how to add more first what if instead of doing that we go what can we take away what distractions can we take away from our life so that we can set ourselves up for success when we add new things in and we create new habits because the whole distraction of technology is I mean it's a whole <laughs> it's a whole thing it's literally created to tech companies literally create these softwares and the hardware, the phone, and all that sort of thing, to distract us. That's how they make money. They want our attention so that they can advertise to us, which gives them money, and a lot of money at that. So they're not going to help us. You know, there's the only way that we can really battle with getting our attention back for ourselves and learning how to choose to pay attention to the things that we want to, in this example, going to the gym five times a week, is by consciously choosing to disengage with those distractions. And of course that will look different for everyone, but you know, in terms of how you practically do that. Um, but it's a step that I just feel as though we miss. I mean, I certainly have missed this step up until this year when I've just happened to be doing this digital, digital detox around new year and realized that it's, it's given me so much more breadth um, of like, attention to choose how I spend my attention if that makes sense and so I can see how in this state of mind I'm in now where I'm not constantly distracted by my phone because I have a flip phone now instead I feel as though learning the habit of 
getting back to the gym and going five times a week, I mean, that still seems like a lot to me, but going back to the gym five times a week would be, would be more accessible to me. Um, but it doesn't help to think that I'm the problem. Um, I mean, sure, there are days where I'm lazy. I hate that word anyway, but I, there are days where I, I struggle a lot to meet the habits that I set for myself or to build the habits that I want to build. But a lot of the time I realized with the absence of my smartphone, it's actually got nothing to do, do with me and everything to do with distractions that I have chosen to integrate into my life. And those distractions have been purposefully built to do what they end up doing, which is distract me. <laughs> um, and I guess to take it a step further, it's not just about distraction. To take the example again of wanting to build the habit of going back to the gym five times a week, if I'm constantly distracted by my phone, so say for example in the morning if I wake up and I've said to myself I'm going to go to the gym straight, straight away first thing, but instead I pick up my phone because it's a habit, you know, off my nightstand and I start looking on social media, that habit has got in the way, that distraction habit has got in the way of the new habit I'm trying to form. And in reaching for my phone each time, I'm reinforcing that habit. <laughs> because in Atomic Habits, which I've only just started reading, but um, I'm really enjoying, there's actually an example where, yeah, so basically um, they explain the habit loop. Sorry, it's written by James Clear. James explains the habit loop, which is a cue a craving, a response and a reward. So I guess in the example of waking up in the morning, the habit would be your phone um, alarm goes off. The craving would be you want to see what has changed on your phone since you looked at it last night on social media. The response would be you grab your phone and you look on social media. And the reward would be that you satisfy your craving to check social media. So grabbing your phone becomes associated with your alarm going off in the morning. So that's the habit that is being reinforced <laughs> and is a complete distraction to the habit that you're actually trying to build, which is an ad, which is getting up and going to the gym. Um, and that to me just feels like something that I've missed before. And now feels quite obvious, but I just wanted to share because it's not just about adding. It's also about considering the distractions and considering what distractions you can, and, and distractions that lead to bad habits or habits you don't want to continue. How can you work on those two? Um, and most of all, it's not necessarily because you're lazy or because you're a failure. Um, these companies are literally built to make you fail when it comes to distracting you with technology. In fact, um, in Digital Min Minimalism by Cal Newport, uh, there is a quote from um, Tristan Harris, who is a former startup founder and Google engineer who deviated from his well-worn path through the world of tech to become something decidedly rarer in this closed world, a whistleblower. And he says, um, they, meaning the tech companies, are programming people. There's always this narrative that technology is neutral and it's up to us to choose how we use it. This is just not true. Technology is not neutral. They want you to use it in particular ways and for long periods of time because that's how they make their money. So yeah, just a thought for this new year amidst all of the chat about <laughs> changing yourself, New Year's resolutions, all of that stuff, adding, adding, adding. What about taking away trying to set parameters around taking away some of the distractions that may be standing in your way to actually succeeding at building new habits. <sighs> Just a thought. Okay, see you next time. Bye!